Hey, welcome to church today. We're so glad that you found us and that you could join us online. No matter where you're from, who you are, or how you're watching the service today, we just want you to know that you are so welcome. And we would love to hear from you too, so say hello in the comments. If you're tuning in for the very first time today, perhaps church isn't what you usually do, then we want to extend a very special welcome to you too and let you know that you're welcome and you're accepted here just as you are. And we would love to connect with you too. And you can do that at the link on the screen or by direct messaging any of our social platforms. For now though, let's jump into today's message. Enjoy. Hey there, Liverpool One Church. Welcome to our online service. We are so glad and happy that you can be joining us today. And let me just say from the off, like wherever you are in the world and wherever life finds you, Emma and I are super pleased that you could be with us, especially for those of you who are maybe just here for the very first time. Maybe a friend of yours or a family member has sent you the link and you just thought, well, I'm inquisitive. Let me just see what this whole church deal is all about. And maybe even you're like in a place in your house right now thinking like, I'm not even a Bible person. Why am I here? I'm not sure that I'm a Christian. I don't know whether this is something that I want to do. I just want you to know from the off, you can just relax because today, honestly, you are part of the family. And we really are building this church for people just like you. And I think we're going to have a really great conversation today because we're going to be talking about one particular subject matter that, if we're honest, you're not necessarily going to love it. You're not necessarily going to love this talk because if we were going to create a title for today's message, we should maybe call it the most annoying talk I've ever heard because we're going to be talking about something that we all struggle with, granted, in varying capacities and at different times perhaps, but every single one of us talk about this one thing that we're not going to love hearing about. So, Em, what do you think about what we're going to talk about today? Well, first of all, I think reading the Bible, it's kind of like having a balanced diet in your life. You've got to have your greens and you've got to have your healthy stuff that the kids don't necessarily like, as well as eating the rubbish stuff, which they absolutely love. And so it's the balanced diet. So here comes a table full of greens coming your way. But this subject that we're going to speak on today, um, not only do we find it difficult in our life right now, but the Bible, uh, the Bible tells us that the disciples, they found it really difficult um, to deal with as well. They found, in fact, they found it such a hard subject to deal with that when Jesus addressed it in them, they asked Jesus to increase their faith. Yeah. I mean, when you think about the disciples, right? Jesus had said, hey, get out the boat and walk on water. And Peter was straight out the boat, not a problem. And he said to them, hey, you can go and heal the sick and cast out demons in my name. And they were like, not a problem. Or go and feed 5,000 plus people and here's two fish to do it with and a couple of loaves of bread. And they were like, yes, sure. But this particular subject that we're going to talk about today when Jesus said to them, I want you to deal with this in your life, they were like, can't do it. You need to give me more faith. Yeah. They just wanted to absolutely check out. And, and even if you sat there right now thinking, but I'm not a Bible person, how's this going to affect me? Well, let me tell you, not only did it affect these early followers of Jesus, but let me just be honest and say that it affects each and every one of us so much so that there's no area of our lives that this issue does not touch even to the point at which we could say that when we've got this issue that we're going to talk about, and we're going to tell you what it is in just a moment, going on in our life, it affects the way in which you relate to your loved ones, your husbands, your wife. It affects the way that you relate to your friendship groups. It can increase your stress levels. It can give you a sleepless night. It can really take away your self-esteem. It is so incredibly frustrating to deal with. So that's why today... We're going to be talking about the world's most annoying topic, and that is offence. Now, why don't we start off by just asking the question straight away, well, what is offence anyway? So I think offence comes when um, you feel aggrieved by somebody else 
But I think you take on offense when you're unwilling to forgive them for their actions. Um, if I can refer to this scripture in Luke, it says here, this is when the disciples asked for more faith. This is what Jesus said to them. He said, watch yourselves. If another believer sins, rebuke that person. Then if there is repentance, you must forgive. And even if that person wrongs you seven times a day, each time in turn, again, he asks for forgiveness you must forgive him. And it was then the Bible went, you're going to have to increase our faith. Because we're all going to struggle with that. I mean, especially when we hear that kind of language, you know, we're going to, you've got to rebuke and repent. It sounds kind of heavy and it can almost sound a little bit overwhelming. I mean, one of the things um, we were talking about this earlier, and we were talking about the root word for offense in the Greek translation, relating to it being like that of a trap. It's something that when you're living with offense in your life, it ensnares you. It becomes like a prison for you where you can't see or figure out how to get out of that trap. And it doesn't do you any good at all. I mean, I would probably say, and maybe you've experienced this too, but when I'm carrying a fence, maybe because somebody has said something about me, said something towards me, said something about my family. I mean, there have been times, especially doing what we do leading the church, there have been many a time when people have been, uh, I think, quite unkind. And whether that be directly, although most people are just keyboard warriors, and maybe you've experienced that too. People slate you on Facebook or they send you a message on social media and it aggrieves you and you feel like, why are people saying that about me? But one of the things that I feel like is I just don't know what to do with it. And that's why that idea of it being a trap is so pertinent because we don't know what we're supposed to do with the offense that we feel and figuring out a healthy response is, I think, super difficult. So, I mean, what do you think we're supposed to do? I think this, first of all, I think that a lot of people don't know that they're carrying offence, that you don't recognise that you are an offended person. And here's the reason why. Because if you knew you were in a trap, you'd do everything you could to get out of it. That's true. That's true. And the, the the Greek word that we were talking around is, is a scandalin. And the scandalin was the stick that the trapper would put the bait on the top. And it was so well disguised, ready to trap some unsuspecting animal. And I think that's the same way that the enemy works in our lives. It's not the big obvious things that yeah. causes problems. It's not, we know to stay away from sin. We know what is right. We know what is wrong. We know what obstacles cause us to stumble. But this, um, this subject, offence, it comes upon us when we least expect it. It's a trap that we fall into. Yeah. I mean, you don't catch a fish by jumping in the water and waving the bait around. You know, the fish are going to see you and they're going to swim in the opposite direction. That's so obvious. But but it's dangled on a fine line, the bait. I know some people that would probably fish that way. Yeah, probably. Your father. <laughs> <laughs> but the fish is dangled on a, on a line that you cannot see. So all the fish sees is the bait and it goes for the bait. And And actually what the Bible is teaching us here is that offense it's a bait that is dangled in front of us and when we go for it it traps us yeah and you know one of the things why I think it's so important for us to talk about this issue and probably for those of you who've maybe been in Liverpool One Church for a while now you'll have heard us talk about this issue before we always like to probably teach this at least twice a year because if there was a number one reason, like even in amongst everything that's going on in the world, here, there and everywhere, but if there was a number one reason as being the main causation factor for why people leave church or leave their faith or leave their life group or leave serving on a team, it's because of offence. And the crazy thing about offence is this, is that sometimes you can be offended and often the causer of that offence may not even know that any offence has been caused. And yet what we do with offence is we hold on to it and somehow 
We think that by thinking about it all the time, by talking about it with all of our friends, by emailing people about the offence that we've been caused, by starting up a social media campaign about the person that's caused the offence, we think sometimes that some good can come from some of that. And I promise you, no good can come from that at all. In fact, one writer says that when you carry offence, it's exactly the same for you as though you drinking poison and then hoping that it would have some kind of adverse effect on the person that had caused the offence in the very first place. That's why we've so got to get to grip with this question. What are we going to do to deal with offence? Yeah, I think it's so true. And I think we get offended as well because we have, um, I think we place expectancy on people. And I think that we, um, and, and it's the, it's when that expectancy fails is when we get offended. And so I think one of the re- ways that we can best deal with offence is, I don't think we can place expectancy on anybody. Sometimes we look and we say, but they're the pastor, they shouldn't have done that. Or he's my husband, or she's my wife, or they're my friend, and they shouldn't have done that. And we have this level of expectancy on a human being. And actually what what Jesus goes on to tell the disciples in that Luke 17 passage is he says to them, offense is going to come in this world. It's impossible to live life and offense not come your way. So we ca- we cannot control the way other people are going to be with us. We can only control our response. And I think if we just see that other people might carry a title or a position or relational capital with us, the thing is we cannot control what's going to come out of their mouth or the way they're going to react in a situation, but we can control um, and govern our response. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's absolutely true. And I think that even Jesus felt so passionately about this issue that he raised it up as a topic of conversation. We've already referenced the Luke scripture, but there's a scripture that will form the main body of our talk that we'll jump into. Anybody who knows me, like all of our staff and our team, like I drive them mad with this because we have a little bit of a phrase around this particular scripture that's found in Matthew's gospel, where I will say to people like, are we going to go Matthew 18 on this? And what I mean by saying that is that, are we going to do what the Bible tells us to do about dealing with offense? Or let me take it even deeper. Are we going to do what Jesus tells us to do? regarding the subject of how to deal with offence, because Jesus spoke into the direct issues that affected the heart the most. I mean, like Jesus would always speak about topics and subjects that he knew that we would struggle with at times. And I think that it would be crazy if Emma and I were to ever sit here and try and make out like we've never been offended ever. Like, honestly, um, Uh, I know exactly what it's like to carry offense. I can remember, uh, you'll probably remember the conversation actually, but but literally when we were starting Liverpool One Church and like our, our, our beginnings were small and insignificant. In fact, we started the church in this very living room where we are now, just like 10 of us would meet and we would gather and we would just pray and ask that God would one day help us to reach out to hurt and lost people. But in this very living living room, even though the start of the church was so small, I remember when somebody came to us and, you know, I think that they were trying to be loving. They were trying to be caring. They just really felt like that that God had spoke to them and they were like, I've just come to give you a word from God. And that is, you shouldn't start a church in Liverpool. No one's ever going to come. No churches succeed and work in Liverpool. So just don't do that. I was heartbroken at the time and had to realise How can I deal with offence? Yeah, I remember that story so well. And I think what was hard at the time was it was somebody that we trusted and it was somebody that we thought was a friend. And um, there's actually a scripture in Psalm 55 and it's David and he's talking from a place of offence, which I think it's always a great help to know that the characters in the Bible struggled with offence also. It gives us great help. And so in this Psalm, David writes this, it's not an enemy who taunts me. I could bear that. It's not my foes who so arrogantly insult me. If it was, I could have hidden away from them. He goes on to say, instead, it was you, my equal 
equal, my companion and my close friend. What good fellowship we once enjoyed together as we walked to the house of God. David is offended by a friend. In, Someone in the church even, you could say. No, yeah. <laughs> this is literally what he's saying. We went to church together. Yeah. We sat next to each other in the meetings. We sang together. We were mates together. We talked all things God together. And now you've offended me. And so, you know, we all carry offense in some way, shape or form. Which is, again, the reason why Jesus spoke about this issue. Because I don't think Jesus wanted or had in his mind a church that was consisted of people that were constantly leaving one church to go to another church to then go to another church because of offense, because someone said something, someone did something. Like, it's just not the Jesus way. And you know, for me and for our church, I want us to be people that pursue the Jesus way. And this is the reason why even Jesus spoke directly into this issue with so much amazing clarity. And the funny thing is, is that when Jesus spoke about it, it wasn't really optional. I mean, we'd probably like it if it was, but when Jesus was speaking to his followers, he was saying, guys, look, when it comes to dealing with offense, you've got to deal with it this way. Don't deal with it the same way and the same route that everybody else deals with it. Deal with it differently because you're called to be different. Now, even if you're sat there right now and you're thinking, well, that's very good. This is what Jesus says. Well, I'm not a Jesus follower. Well, hey, the great news for you is if you do this very thing as well that Jesus encourages us all to do, if you feel offended in life, I promise you, you're going to see the benefits. You're going to feel the benefits. But if you're a follower of Jesus, if you answer yes to that question of, are you a Christian? Do you follow Jesus? Are you a follower of the way? then this is not multiple choice in here. This is not optional. It's not like you can take some bits and leave others. Jesus was saying, look, if you follow me, this is how you deal with offense. And this is what he says in Matthew 18. If a fellow believer hurts you, which is interesting to me because now we're talking about the same thing we've just been discussing. Often you can get offended by people that know you, that love you. At times you like each other, even in the same church as one another then go and tell him. Work it out between the two of you. If he listens, you've made a friend. If he won't listen, take one or two others along with you so that in the presence of witnesses, things will be kept honest and you can try again. So here are the three things that you've got to do if you want to successfully deal and manage with those ill feelings of offense that we often always carry. You've got to do what Jesus says. So it starts with, and what do you think? The first thing we've got to do. Yeah, I think the first thing you've got to do is take onus yourself. You have to take responsibility yeah. for the offence that you carry. If you're waiting for the person who's offended you to put the wrong right, you're going to be waiting sometimes a lifetime, literally a lifetime. Yeah. And um, there's actually a, um, a, a proverb and it says this, that a brother offended is harder to win than a walled city. And in ancient Israel, the strongest of cities had a wall built all the way around them and it was to stop the enemy from getting in, but it was also to stop people from getting out. And it says in the Bible that an offended person is harder to win over, harder to get through to than a walled city. Because this is what happens when you're offended, you build a wall around yourself because you build a wall of defense up. I I'm not going to trust people again. I'm not going to fall in love again. I'm not going to have a close friend again. I'm not going to go to a church again. I'm not going to join a life group again. I'm going to build my wall up so that I can protect myself. But here's the thing, though you stop people from getting in, you've also stopped yourself from coming out and therefore you have ensnared yourself. You've trapped yourself. You've locked yourself into a place where no one can love you. No one can influence you. No one can help you. And no one can help heal you from that offense. So the first thing you've just got to do is take the onus of responsibility and say, if you're the one that's offended, you are the one 
that's got to do something. So now let's move on to the next thing. So what do we actually do? Well, the second thing that Jesus instructs us to do is this. You've got to talk it out alone with the person that's caused that offence, with whoever it may be that has hurt you, said something that is painful to you, maybe said something against your family or against the project that you're involved in. Like if they've scarred you, you've got to talk to them directly. Have some honest heart-to-heart conversation, but with them alone. And the crazy thing is, is what Jesus is telling us to do here, again, just so we know, this is instructional, it's not optional. But what he's saying is, don't do what everybody else does. Don't be like everybody else, that when they're offended, they want to talk to their friends, their family, their parents. In other words, the world knows about the offence that's been caused to you, often before the causer of that offence is even aware that they've caused any offence at all. Jesus was saying, go alone. Yeah, but hang on a minute, Jesus, you don't understand. Um, I have Facebook and I want to start a Facebook campaign about this. Jesus was like, no, that's not how you do it. Yeah, but Jesus, is it okay if I just put like a subliminal message out there on Instagram? I'm going to post a photograph and then write some words and just to point it and aim it at the cause of the offense so they know that this is me attacking them. Jesus was like, no, that ain't going to cut it either. Well, what about Twitter? Can I tweet about this? Jesus was like, no. Yeah, but surely I can speak to my best friend about this. Jesus was like, no. If you feel offended, you've got to go and talk to them alone with the hope that your relationship together can be restored. Because hey, how much easier is your life? How much easier is all of our lives when we live harmoniously together? Like we're just getting on. Life is better. So when you feel offended, You've got to, number one, take the onus of responsibility. You're the one that has to go. But number two, you've got to go alone without anybody else even being aware that you're going to have that difficult conversation. Go it alone. And then thirdly and finally. Yeah, I think finally is ask for help. Yeah. And um, and I think that's really important is that we, we're there one for another and we're not meant to do this life on our own. I mean, you can find God on your own, but we follow Him and we, we learn to become disciples of Him together. And that's why we firmly believe in being connected and being relational. And, um, and you know, it, there's always strength in togetherness. And, and so, it, you know, if you're offended, if you're upset, then go and find someone someone that you can talk to, who can help you through, who can take you back to to what the Bible says, who can help you to let go of that offence. Because here's the thing, you don't want to stay stuck. You don't want to stay restricted. You don't want to stay inhibited inhibited all of your life. You want to be able to live life free. So don't harbour that offence. Don't carry that offence. But go and get alongside someone you trust, someone who's further on in the faith from you, someone who will pray with you and help you to let go of the very thing that you've been carrying around. Yeah. But also in the context of Matthew 18, that idea of asking for some help, what it really implies as well is like, if you've been the one that's taken responsibility and you've kind of gone, okay, I'm offended. So you choose to go and speak to them and you do go alone. And if that conversation has not been successful, that's when you go for help. Like if you've tried to work it out on your own and it's not really gone the way, it's not been received very well, there's maybe been a little bit of aggression and and it's like, it just feels like this is super difficult. Then if you still want to try and get over that hurdle of offense, then absolutely do, do what Jesus says. If they're not going to listen to you when you go alone, then then go with somebody else in your faith. Go with someone that you can trust to almost like be the referee and sort things out. Because if we're honest for a moment, there's not one of us that could ever say that it's not being helpful when somebody else has just been involved in some of the struggles and the challenges that we all go through. Sometimes it can be the most helpful thing to have an independent party, almost like be the one that just referees each, it referees both of you so that you're at either opposite ends of the ring, right? Before the fight begins, let's at least make it a fair fight. But Jesus was like, just make sure when you're asking for help, try and go it alone first. But if that's not successful, then go with someone that you trust in your faith. So 
In closing, what would be the one thing that you would just sort of say to anybody that would be carrying a fence right now? What would your one takeaway line be to say, like, this is what you got to do? Um, okay, I would say we all have to set goals for our life. What is it you want to achieve? What's the type of person you want to become? Where do you see yourself in the future? And then you have to um, it, uh, implement discipline to get to reach your goal. And that for me is how I would deal with offence. I have to, if there's opportunity to be offended, I have to remind myself of who I want to become, who I want to model to my children, uh, the, the type of person that I am. Who do I want my friends to see me? And if carrying this offence is not going to help me become that person, then I'm going to make a choice here and now. And it's a discipline. It's like if, you, if you're trying to lose weight, you have a goal to lose the weight, but the discipline comes when the biscuit tin comes out. So we have to have disciplines in our life that say, I choose not to take that offence on board. No, it's so, so true. And you know, um, our heart for you is that you would live a healthy and a strong life. And I believe that when you follow Jesus, it makes you better at life and it also makes your life better. It's like it's a double-edged sword of God's goodness coming right at you. So, you know, maybe if this message has encouraged you today, then I would love it if you could like leave a comment, like tweet about it, go on Instagram about it. Let your friends know that this online service is taking place because because we really are passionate about bringing to you life-giving, inspirational messages and talks that are gonna really impact your daily life and routine. And can I just say this in closing? If you've not yet made a decision to follow Jesus, like if you've not ever made that choice that you wanna become a Christian, then in just a moment, then I'm gonna pray and I'm gonna invite you to pray this prayer alongside me as well, because I am wholeheartedly convinced that being a follower of Jesus is the, it's not like a way to do life, it is the best way to do life. And I don't want you to live life held down and weighted with a fence or any else of that other, any other of that kind of rubbish that we can easily carry. I want you to come into a real and authentic relationship with our one and true living God that we serve. And, and that's made possible through faith in Jesus Christ, who is God's one and only son. So right now we're gonna close in prayer and I'm gonna pray for you. And maybe if you're sat there right now in your living room, in your bedroom, in your kitchen, you're like, you know, I, I think I wanna give this Christianity thing a shot. Like this makes sense to me. Having heard the words of Jesus, this is something that I can relate to. Then I would love to pray for you right now. So maybe, you know, I don't wanna make this weird for you just in the comfort of your own home. You can close your eyes if you want to, but you don't necessarily have to, but I'm gonna say a prayer and then in your heart, you can pray this prayer after me. Father in heaven, I come to you right now and I'm choosing to put my trust in you. I believe in who you are and that you gave your son Jesus to die on a cross for me. So I'm asking to know you, for you to come and live in my heart as I turn away from all the things that I've done wrong and ask for your forgiveness. Because from this point forth, I'm choosing to follow you, be a follower of Jesus and call myself a Christian. Amen. You know, if you have prayed that prayer, you can just hit the hand button in the online service or you can click the link that's on uh, YouTube or on Facebook Live. You can reach out to us by DMing us behind the back of Instagram because we wanna know and celebrate with you and get you started on your brand new journey of faith. And we can't wait to celebrate that with you. But for now though, guys, have yourself an absolutely great rest of the week. And we can't wait to see you back here for Church Online.
So don't let your heart be troubled. Hold your head up high. Don't fear no evil. Fix your eyes on this one truth. God is madly in love with you. So take courage, hold on, be strong. Remember where our help comes from. Hold on, be strong. Remember where our hell comes from. Jesus, 
Light of heaven, friend forever, his kingdom come. Before we sign off today, if you've been encouraged or inspired by this message, then we would love to give you the opportunity to sow financially into the work that we do here at Liverpool One Church. You know, the Bible says in Luke 6, give and it will be given to you, a good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. And it's the only moment in the Bible where God actually says, test me in this. Test me and see if I don't provide because here's the deal. If God can give through you, then God will give to you. So let's take up our giving today and there's a number of ways that you can do that on the screen right now. thanks so much for joining us online today we hope that you've been encouraged and inspired and don't forget to connect with us on social media or on the link that's on the screen now have a great week